David Tokyo Bro and Matt Smith. We first met them 21 years ago on the Real World New Orleans. They are coming back, Real World Homecoming. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank yeah, you absolutely. For being here, bro. We love you. Go ahead. All right, Dave, uh, Tokyo, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. Come on, be my baby tonight. Uh, obviously, an iconic part of the original series. You're from Chicago. What were your musical influences? And tell us a little bit about, you know, bringing your music uh, to that show. Well, okay, so, so specifically for Come On Be My Baby Tonight, again, this was something that I was just doing for the show and for my castmates. Um, it didn't go well the first time, but um, this time in the homecoming, I'm not, not going to spoil it for anyone, but it's going to be more of a, a, a welcoming addition. Um, I don't know about the iconic song. I've never really embraced that, um, but um, my castmates and I um, love that it's become part of the show. Uh, musical inspirations, Bjork, Tori Amos, those are my top two. And I've got some, of course, Frank Sinatra, which I, which I, I know you know is part of the Come With Me, My Baby Tonight um, of inspiration, so to speak. Um, but I, I love the fact that the, every, the little nuances can be part of our story and that they can bring that out. And I really do love that. And Matt, uh, for you, obviously your life is very different than it was when you were, you know, you're, you're a father, you're, you're married, you know, life is very different than it was when you were on the show. What's it like having everybody talk about the series now that the, the original one is currently on Paramount Plus uh, to stream and then people are getting ready for homecoming? Uh, is, what kind of memories does this bring it up and, you know, what kind of feelings are you, are you having? Uh, I would say memories and feelings are totally mixed, um, you know, because I, I think we have two different versions of our life, uh, which is the one that we edit for the rest of the world to see. And that's what you see people doing every day through their conversations and through social media. We're all self editors in one way or to another, um, but reality shows they're edited and it's not us doing the editing, but someone else. So there's, I would say there's a mix of excitement and anxiety that comes with that, if we were to be honest, uh, but also just understanding that we can be proud of who we are you know, that, you know, you mentioned earlier, for me, it was always very important, you know, that my faith and my family would be central to my life. And um, it was then, and it is now, except my family is different. I'm married, I have a, a six children. Can you believe that, man? Uh, that is amazing. Children. Congratulations. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am grown up, just like all your viewers. I paid my taxes last week, took care of the Easter baskets, uh, went to church, you know? So like, I am just another grown up in this world who also happened to bump into a reality show. <laughs> I, I do wanna ask both of you this question. Obviously, you know, this was the time for a certain generation right before 9-11, you know, COVID right now is defining a certain generation. But for people who grew up in that time, this was kind of that last period where we had those conversations about, you know, racial inequality, don't ask, don't tell. I mean, these are some of these issues that you, people are still dealing with now. What's it like to be having those conversations especially as you know, we're getting ready for, for this new uh, reunion to happen. Uh, Tokyo, I mean, if you want to go first. I mean, you, you, you bring up a great point because if you, if you take, it, take it to the, the micro in um, our cast, we um, left New Orleans right before Katrina, right? So then that brought up a whole entire um, essence of um, racial equality and things like that. And then we went back after Ida, Okay, so then we're also talking about after 9-11. So all these major things are happening either after, during our show, during the taping. Um, and I'm not saying that we are a, a catalyst or a driving force or whatever to have that conversation, but it's a blessing to be able to um, integrate that into our conversation, even as uncomfortable as it may be, but because we have that strength in each other, because we have that love in each other to be able to have the difficult conversations we kind of, you know, I mean, sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't, but it's the opportunity to show people that this is how we can do it, that we can have that conversation. We can be, um, have that, 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 that opinions and things like that, but still come back together and live uh, copacetically. And what about for you, Matt? Yeah, and I, I think what, it's a, it's a unique burden, but also a unique opportunity to take our micro world and to talk about the macro situation. And I, I think all of us at best can understand the world and the way that we see it through our day to day. And one of the neat things about uh, you know, the real world from its inception, but also with homecoming, is that you don't really, uh, you, know, you don't retreat into the far corners of your life. What you're doing is you're confronting 
everything that you've experienced and you're sharing that with others, whether our past experience have been positive or negative, you bring it out there. So there's a sense of rawness that, that uh, I think was just built into what we were doing. And then also trying to grapple with uh, the stories going on in the country around us. Like it's not a pretty thing, you know, like to write an essay about this stuff or to tweet about it with people who agree with everything you've ever said, that part is easy but to get together with people and learn about the unique paths that we've had, the challenges that we've faced and to have compassion for one another, that really doesn't happen. We wanna think it does because it makes us feel better about our own edited life, mm -hmm. but it really doesn't happen for people to get mm -hmm. together. So there's like, you know, some real growing, there's some real pain, there's some real uh, uh, desperation, you know, wanting to find healing and it's raw. Like, it's not like, this is not a coronation. We're not going there to be crowned as cool. You know, that's what social media is for, is that you're presenting yourself as cool. This is very different. It's real people in raw situations, finding a way to love each other, uh, knowing differences were always there all along. Mm -hmm. that, that is amazing. Well, we can't wait to watch April 20th, Paramount Plus, uh, Real World Homecoming, New Orleans. Great to see you both. And I uh, can't wait to see how, how everything uh, shapes out to be. Thank you for Let, your let's time. Hope it Thank works you so out much. Well. <laughs> Thank you so much.